Hello and welcome back to a new video. So here we will talk about the haloperidol. Haloperidol is another antipsychotic medication that is used in treatment of psychotic disorders such as schizophrenia. And here we will explain all the details related to this medication. You can skip to other parts of this video using the video chapters available in the video description. And regarding the pictures, the picture on the left is for the chemical structure of the haloperidol. The black spheres are for the carbon atoms. The white spheres are for the hydrogen atoms. The blue sphere is for the nitrogen atom. The red spheres are for the oxygen atoms. The dark green sphere is for the chloride atom and the light green sphere is for the floor atom. The right picture here representing the intramuscular formula of this medication. So let's start with an overview. So the haloperidol is the scientific name of the medication and the famous trade name for it is halodol. And it is classified as high potency antipsychotic, meaning it is more effective compared with some other antipsychotics and it is typical antipsychotic so antipsychotics are classified into typicals and atypicals the typicals are the old ones they are discovered in the 1950s while the atypicals are the new ones which are discovered in the 1970s so the haloperidol is from the typical antipsychotics and it is from the butyrophenones family of medications. It is used in treatment of schizophrenia and some other mental disorders. And the haloperidol was discovered in 1958 by the Belgian physician Paul Janssen. Now let's talk about the pharmacokinetics of the haloperidol. So it is available as oral, intramuscular, and intravenous formulas. The oral formula has good absorption with bioavailability of 60 to 70%. And of course, the bioavailability for the intramuscular and the intravenous formula is 100%. For the distribution, the haloperidol is heavily protein bound by 90% and the free part is distributed to different body tissues. So the free part is 10% and it is distributed to different body tissues, including the central nervous system, where it has its actions. It is metabolized by the liver through glucuronidation and cytochrome P450 oxidation by the CYP3A4 enzyme. And those pictures are for the oral formula on the left and the intravenous formula of the haloperidol on the right. And it is excreted through the bile and urine. Now regarding the mechanism of action of the haloperidol. So the haloperidol work by antagonizing the dopamine D2 receptors in the brain. And it block dopamine in the dopaminergic pathways in the brain. Those include the mesolimbic and mesocortical pathways which lead to the relieving of the psychotic symptoms. So the mesolimbic is a pathway that connects the ventral tegmental area in the brain here with the nucleus accumbens here. So this is the mesolimbic pathway and the mesocortical connects the ventral tegmental area with the frontal lobe. So this is the mesocortical pathway. And haloperidol inhibit dopamine in both of these pathways to produce the relieving of the psychotic symptoms because psychosis and schizophrenia occur when dopamine levels in those pathways, the mesolimbic and the mesocortical pathways increase. And haloperidol work on that to decrease dopamine levels in those pathways, thus providing the relieving of the psychotic symptoms. Now it also blocks the dopamine 
in the nigro striatal pathway which lead to extrapyramidal symptoms as adverse effects. So it also inhibits dopamine in a different pathway which is the nigro striatal pathway. It connects the substantia nigra here with the striatum and butamin here. And all of those are parts of the basal ganglia. So when haloperidol inhibits dopamine in this pathway, this would lead to the extrapyramidal symptoms such as dystonia, dyskinesia, and tremor. And all of those are considered side effects to the medication. And all of those are considered as adverse effects to the medication that we will discuss more in the adverse effects part of this video. So it also blocks dopamine in the tubero infundibular pathway, which lead to hyperprolactinemia as an adverse effect. So it also blocks dopamine in the tubero infundibular pathway, which is another dopaminergic pathway that connects the hypothalamus with the pituitary. And this pathway is responsible for balancing prolactin levels. And when the dopamine levels decrease in this pathway, this would lead to hyperprolactinemia, which is also an adverse effect to this medication. And the haloperidol also has anti-serotonin effects, which will control the negative symptoms of schizophrenia, such as social isolation and loss of interests and flat affect. All of those are considered negative symptoms of schizophrenia and antagonizing serotonin would give relief to those symptoms. It also has anti-mascarinic effects, which lead to side effects. And it also has antihistamine activity, which decrease the response to allergy. It also blocks the alpha adrenergic receptors to some degree, which lead to orthostatic hypotension and light headedness. Now let's talk about the therapeutic uses of the haloperidol. So it is used in treatment of psychotic disorders such as schizophrenia and acute psychosis. In schizophrenia, there is the positive symptoms, which are the delusions and hallucinations, and haloperidol manages those symptoms well. And there is also the negative symptoms, which are the social isolation, the loss of interests, and the flat affect and others and they are also managed by the haloperidol. It is also used in treatment of tics, intorate syndrome and it is used in treatment of manic phase of bipolar disorder. It is effective in treatment of agitation and aggressive behaviors because it has a calming effect on the patient. That is why it is used in agitation, aggressive behavior and manic phase and it is used in treatment of alcohol withdrawal symptoms, such as hallucinations. And it is used in treatment of intractable hiccups and in treatment of severe nausea and vomiting, not responding to the first line medications. Because haloperidol inhibits the vomiting center, that is why it is used in treatment of severe nausea and vomiting. Now let's talk about the dosing of this medication. So for schizophrenia and Tourette syndrome, the same dose is used. So it is about 0.5 to 2 milligrams orally two to three times a day. And the max dose is 30 milligrams per day. And for acute agitation, it is administered in two to five milligrams intramuscular dose every four to eight hours. Now let's talk about the treatment considerations that has to be taken into account during the treatment with haloperidol. So in long term use of haloperidol for schizophrenia and other chronic disorders, daily dose should be reduced to the lowest level possible for maintenance because of the many side effects that comes with higher doses. And in long-term use of this medication, 
routine monitoring, including measurement of BMI, blood pressure, fasting blood sugar, and lipid profile is recommended due to the risk of side effects because this medication lead to increase the weight of the patient it also leads to variation in blood pressure and it also affects the blood sugar and the libido profile that is why we have to monitor those parameters to make sure that the patient stays healthy while while in treatment with haloperidol now let's talk about the adverse effects of the haloperidol so those include extrapyramidal symptoms which are movement disorders those occur due to the blocking of dopamine in the nigrostriatal pathway and those are more common with haloperidol than with other antipsychotics because haloperidol is a high potency antipsychotic so it inhibits dopamine in the nigrostriatal pathway more aggressively than other antipsychotics and those include acute dystonia which is muscle spasm develops within hours to days after initiation of treatment akathasia which is restlessness that develops days to months after initiation of therapy and tardive dyskinesia which is uncontrollable repetitive movements that develops after years of initiation of the treatment and haloperidol also may lead to neuroleptic malignant syndrome neuroleptic malignant syndrome is a triad of muscle rigidity hyperthermia and autonomic disturbance like variations in blood pressure and tachypnea and tachycardia haloperidol also lead to anticholinergic side effects such as elevated temperature dry mouth sedation constipation and urinary retention and it also lead to weight gain as we mentioned and it lead to hyperprolactinemia because it inhibit the tubero infundibular pathway as we mentioned which lead to erectile dysfunction in males and amenorrhea or galactoria in females it also block the alpha adrenergic receptors to some degree leading to postural hypotension reflex tachycardia and palpitation and it may lead to eye lens opacities if haloperidol is used for a long time because it accumulates in the lens and it may lead to QT interval prolongation in the heart which may lead to torsades debones arrhythmia now let's talk about the contraindications of haloperidol so it is contraindicated in a previous hypersensitivity reaction to the medication in some individual and it is contraindicated in Parkinson's disease patients and in lower body dementia patients and in patients with CNS depression and in coma and in patients with concurrent use with barbiturates, benzodiazepines and opioids because all of these medications lead to CNS depression and haloperidol makes CNS depression worse. Now let's talk about some warnings that you have to pay attention to. So there is increased risk of death if haloperidol is used in elderly patients with dementia related psychosis that is why it is not FDA approved for this use and intravenous use with higher doses may lead to torsades, deep points, arrhythmias and sudden death and motor instability, orthostatic hypotension may lead to falls and fractures while on this medication because it leads to motor instability and orthostatic hypotension these patients who are treated with haloperidol may fall and fracture their limbs while on this medication now let's talk about the haloperidol toxicity so when the patient take a higher dose 
than recommended. This led to symptoms of toxicity, which include severe extrapyramidal symptoms, hypotension, sedation, and coma with severe respiratory depression. And there is no antidote for the haloperidol, and treatment is supportive. Gastric lavage and activated charcoal are useful, and airways breathing circulation should be checked. Endotracheal intubation and ventilation when are needed. Intravenous fluids, albumin, and vasopressors may be needed. Finally, let's talk about the haloperidol interactions with other drugs. So it interacts with amiodarone. So both of these medications, the haloperidol and the amiodarone, prolong the QT interval. And if the patient take them together, this will increase the risk of torsades de Bois arrhythmia. And it also interacts with amphetamine and methylphenidate. So haloperidol antagonizes the action of norepinephrine and dopamine in patients taking this medication because it's a dopamine blocker, as we know. And epinephrine also antagonized by haloperidol and this would lead to decrease the blood pressure and it also interacts with levodopa it antagonizes its action because it's a dopamine blocker again and it interacts with the lithium the lithium is used in mood disorders uh, but when it is used with haloperidol this may lead to rare cases of encephalopathy and it also in interacts with methyl dopa. This will lead to increased the extrapyramidal symptoms. And CYP inducers and inhibitors affect the metabolism of haloperidol. Inducers such as carbamazepine, phenobarbital, and rifampicin associated with low levels of haloperidol. And inhibitors such as quinidine busporon and fluoxetine associated with higher plasma levels and this may lead to toxicity. Tricyclic antidepressants metabolism decrease if used with haloperidol together and this might lead to toxicity with the tricyclic antidepressants. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe and if you want to support us more, you can by subscribing to the Patreon link provided in the description of this video. Thank you guys for watching and peace.